with the insiders. Get moving. All right. <laughs> My God, man. <laughs> let's, let's kick this off. My name is Greg Neerman. I'm a technology evangelist for Hitachi Data Systems. I'm also the co-host of Speaking in Tech. Uh, and this session is going to be recorded as a podcast for download for subscribers. So right off the bat, the session is called Ask the Experts Designing Storage for the Enterprise. We did a similar panel to this in Paris in November with the same panelists. Everybody has survived since Paris. Uh, Neil, glad to see you're still at Red Hat. Uh, <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't bounced yet from Ink Tank? I'm, I'm, I, I was going to make a comment about other panelists and companies, but I'll, 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 I'll leave that alone. Yeah. So well, go well you haven't glostered Seth yet, so you're making progress. There you go. <laughs> well, 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 let's well. begin! <laughs> he any questions Lock the yet. doors. <laughs> All right, let's go right down the line. Mark, introduce yourself and your company and title. Mark Toomey, um, Technology Director, CTO Team EMC. Oh, yeah, I have to give the yeah, mic. Yeah, need the mic. Uh, Aaron Delp, Director of Solutions at SolidFire. Uh, Neil Levine, Director of Product Management at Red Hat Storage. Uh, Manju Ramanathpura, uh, CTO for Intelligent Platforms. I'm responsible for some of the open source related incubation strategy and planning, as well as network solutions. We don't need the life story. Title would have done for <laughs> well, oh, oh. So, <laughs> who's the moderator yeah. here? Is yeah. it me or Josh? <laughs> Alex, <laughs> to Alex, you. <laughs> thank you. Alex McGraw from NetApp, a uh, member of the Office of the CTO, doing standards and industry associations, of which this OpenStack is one of them. Fantastic. And Alex, we're going to start off with you this week. Thank you. You know, last year, or well, I keep saying last year, but, uh, six months ago. It feels in, like a year. In, yeah, it feels like, feels like that, that whole session felt like a year. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the maturity of enterprise storage in OpenStack since the Paris Summit and just what you've seen here at the show this week. Where are we at? So, I'd, you know, I'd like to thank everybody for, for uh, coming along to the session in the first place. It, it, it is quite interesting seeing people coming along to ask experts when what I've seen this week still, I'm, I'm still a little disappointed, pleased in some respects, we seem to have made some progress, disappointed in other respects. And the respect I think I'm most disappointed in is the understanding that people have of storage within the open, OpenStack community is not perhaps as good as it should be. Not could be, should be. It needs to be a lot better. I'm What's still, the context for that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, see, we all understand storage. No, I'm still seeing presentations where people are talking about vendor lock-in. I mean, come on, guys, grow up. This isn't about vendor lock-in. This is about providing business solutions with enterprise class products out to the businesses that you serve in. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is some of the technology issues I've heard described here this week, we solved in the 1990s. These are 20 year old problems you're digging up again. Now I'm an old guy, I've got gray hair. I've been around the block more than once. Um, Twice. Four times, a lady. There's a song in there somewhere. There's a the village point. when he started, not a block. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the point I'm making is that we appear to be in the OpenStack community reinventing problems we've already solved. And one I heard of yesterday, for instance, was um, uh, scrubbing, data scrubbing on, on, on drives. There's another, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at, at implementations of storage. I'm going to, no names, no pack drill, with large numbers of SSDs that performs like a dog. I mean, how can we, how can we build systems like this in the, you know, in the 21st century, in the year 2015? It's, it's crazy, guys. We've really, really got to grow up with the storage stuff. Stop thinking of the vendors as the enemy, they're not. They're your friends, we've done all this before. We can actually provide you with solutions as well that are cheaper per gigabyte per month than some of the advertised figures I've seen this week from people screwing together stuff that, to be quite frank, my ex-CTO, great guy, has got a, a real phrase I use all the time, which is, there's a difference between computer science and software engineering, and what I'm seeing is a lot of computer science. Okay, we need to do more software engineering. We need to be a bit more robust about Alex, it. Alex, just hold on one minute. In, in contrast to that, Neil, I kind of, kind of, I'm kind of looking at you and, and wondering what your reflections are, of that, especially f from the perspective of Seth, right? And Red Hat specifically. Are you seeing some of those same recycled questions, or is it different now because we're more in a software oriented era as opposed to a hardware infrastructure era? Um, I think, uh, well, I'm going to speak directly to Alex's point. I'm going to have a, have a different perspective here. Um, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what he's saying, that, that, that there is a lot of 
sort of fundam fundamental stuff being addressed, especially when you look in some of the OpenStack services. I mean, there's things which have been implemented which should be easy and still don't work and are pretty essential. But uh, I, yeah, the computer science versus software engineering, I mean, this is open source. Open source is, is not a, you know, it's a anarchistic kind of community effort. It doesn't produce perfection first time. It sucks, but it's, it's, it brings a lot of other benefits. Um, from, from, the, from my perspective, when I see with Ceph customers, yes, the, things have definitely matured with deployments now. I mean, we have customers not just kicking POCs and doing test and dev. They have real production workloads with not just single storage backends. There's a variety of storage backends I see, actually. It's not exclusive anymore. Um, which is great. This is what we wanted. We wanted people, people to be able to plug in different things into different drivers. And, you know, th these are mature systems. So are they perfect? No. Is there more to do? Yes. But it is addressing business problems. People are running, you know, we've seen some of it from the keynotes. There are some pretty big systems running with a variety of storage systems underneath. That, that's, that's a success, I think. And before you, I just want to remind everybody that we've got a microphone here right in the middle. If you've got a question, this is a session for you. Ask the experts. Just like, uh, walk up to the microphone, and we'll get to you right away. Go ahead, Eric. I can talk now. No, no I'm cut, just kidding. Cut him off. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, is it Mark. Why don't you? Yeah. So no, all I wanted to do was kind of maybe tie those two points together and just kind of say, uh, you know, again, the title of this is is enterprises in the title there, right? What is the expectations of the enterprise? The the enterprise has a much higher set of expectations, I think, that than really some of the OpenStack way over the years has, has been providing, right? But I think we're getting there without a doubt, and that's where I think Neil's perspective comes in. If you, how do you take OpenStack and really make it up to the enterprise expectations? I think, I think we're getting there, I do. But at the end of the day too, what is the expectations of Cinder specifically mm -hmm. within that? And you know, at the end of the day, for most of the conversations I've had with folks is, they just want it to be a clean abstraction layer of the hardware, a, a, a you know interface that they can kind of use just like they've been using previously with storage. And it, it's more of getting those base features in there mm -hmm. and getting the drivers in there for all the different platforms they're using and, and having them actually stable and 100% compliant into the Cinder API and fully functional. And that is probably the biggest challenge right now still. Um, and that's something, you know, I, we talked about the last time we did this. Yes, for that's a while. true. And it's, you know, it's six months later and, and I, you know, they're getting better, but those issues are still there. And yeah. that's one of the biggest challenges I've seen talking to enterprise customers specifically. Manju, we've talked uh, last time uh, about some of the gaps um, in enterprise storage for the OpenStack environments. What are your observations between now and when we last had this panel six months ago? I think I'd agree with uh, uh, you know both of the gentlemen who spoke about some of the gaps that That's exist. That's no fun. Yeah, you guys get um, disagreeable. <laughs> uh, not a gentleman. Okay, not, not this guy. Okay, there we go. So this dude and uh, this gentleman. Um, <laughs> the, 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 so basically, if you look at it right, last uh, last um, uh, panel discussion, we talked about Cinder is ready in terms of doing the basic functionalities you know, provisioning the storage, replicating storage, snapshotting, these type of basic functionalities, Cinder is ready. That was never the forte from enterprise storage's perspective. Those were table stakes, right? What you do from security, what you do from multi-tenancy perspective, and what you do from monitoring, what you do from troubleshooting, those were the things that were always the value-added functionalities, and this was the reason always enterprises went with vendors, right? Anybody can do the basic table stake stuff. I think if you look at uh, where we are and compare with where we were, we're making progress, but we still are not there. You know, I have an engineer here in the audience who's been working with the Silometer working group, right? Silometer is one of the, uh, you know, the component, especially from a Cinder perspective, there's not a lot of metrics that it can actually gather make it available from a monitoring point of view or you know, fine tuning perspective. Um, I think things are progressing, but we are still not there. We are better than where we were about six months back, obviously. People are working very hard, but I think uh, you know, if I look from our customer's perspective, customers are looking at Cinder to do the basic work, the table stakes work, and beyond that, they are still falling back on traditional features that enterprises have provided. I think yesterday there was a presentation, I could not join, but some of our guys joined, 
um, AVG, I believe, is the um, uh, customer. They're using Hitachi Storage today in production with Cinder. And believe it or not, they're running other third-party storage. I won't name them. They're behind <laughs> Hitachi Storage. And there's a reason why they're doing it. We have a technology UVM that people like it, right? And this customer happens to like the technology. Similarly, every vendor has their differentiated functionalities that are in their storage. And unfortunately, what I'm really seeing from a vendor, I mean, the customer adoption perspective, they're still falling back on these value-added functionalities that are really, really needed. They are not really optional features. So that's what's happening right now. Right. Cinder <clears throat> adoption is growing, but at the same time, uh, the, the enterprise features that uh, vendors are, have always had, they continue to be uh, add-on features on top of it, which becomes really the key piece of it. Cinder becomes more of a you know, standard table stake features. Right. Well, we got to get to Mark here because I know you've been waiting to, to, to I've been jump chomp, I'm chomping at the bit <laughs> you know, because everything's changed in six months. No, um, <laughs> yeah, you weren't there. It's you're all new. Um, so we turn around, I look at the market. What's going on in, in our case is, uh, in the EMC case, should I say, is that, yes, people are still doing it with the storage array platforms, uh, OpenStack and so on. Those tend to be people who are just adopting OpenStack. Anyone going big is doing the, usually the software-defined storage route, like Scale.io or something like that going big. But when we talk about enterprise features and moving forward, and something I picked up in this show, the only way we're going to move storage forward, right, everyone up in this stage and the other vendors are out in the market, thing, we're going to have to get together and start pushing some of that experience that we, that we have. Uh, if we don't, if we don't put the, the rocks down and stop battering each other uh, and kicking each other in the face just for the laugh mostly. Is there that much battering going on though? I would say, I think generally in the storage market, was vendors, I done? vendors like to come, hold on. <laughs> yes. Was I, I'm sorry, am I stuttering? <laughs> No, but it, I mean, it, it generally, isn't in the OpenStack environment, it's a little bit more friendly. I mean, look at just look at us here on this panel. It's, it, it's. I don't know if it's as confrontational as it is. In maybe I think it's. A, I think any time, any any time you have a sales guy coming in with another sales guy, it's going to be they're going to beat each other with the rock because we're here. There's a bunch of engineers sitting on the stage, right? I think so. it's just the problem of democracy. Things will evolve, but when you put multiple people with different interests, you know, as a you know, most of the people who are contributing to open source today, right, there is a vendor back in behind it, right. And from vendor's perspective, they want to be a good corporate citizen to open source, but at the same time, they have to keep their job, right? So that's where the difference in priorities, what, what my priorities are, would be different from uh, Tumi's priorities are. So I think that's where, you know, it's kind of more of a democracy, things are evolving up. Yeah, I, can, I can just hand you my microphone and, you know, you can finish my part. <laughs> Alex, I, you no, I was, was just going to say, you know, that, that, that uh, I used to work for a manager who used to say, you know, we, we, we live in a democracy, but you don't get a vote. And I think that's, that, that's the way a lot, of the, a lot of this needs to necessarily work. The, the, the point I want to come back to Mark on about the, the, the cooperation between vendors, at, at the education aspect of it as well, I think we have been remiss. I think we as, a, as, a, as an industry have been remiss in not educating people about wh how difficult storage is. I, 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 I can't really explain how much work, it's an enormous amount, that we collectively do to make SSDs and disk drives actually look like SSDs and disk drives. The, the, they are the ugliest pieces of kit under the covers you've ever seen. We spend enormous amounts of effort making them look nice. The other thing that we do and we try to do really well is virtualize stuff so that you end up with, you know, we don't have puns anymore, do we? We have LUNs. We went through that phase 25 years ago. It's all logical. But the virtualization I'm seeing here, you must be really careful. There are two things you cannot virtualize away fr from storage. You can virtualize a certain amount of reliability into the solution. So we can always make disks look more reliable than they are. But we cannot virtualize more bandwidth into a system, and we cannot virtualize more or less latency into a system. You have to remember the underlying hardware always pokes through in the end. Bandwidth and latency are two things you cannot avoid. They are physical in nature. And that I've been seeing again this week, where people believing that by having some form of abstraction layer. You can abstract away the issues of bandwidth, or you can abstract the, away the issues of latency, and then we get presentations about how people have gotten seriously bitten in the bum 
when the real world imposes its, you know, it, 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 who was it? There was a presentation, I'm, again, I don't want to mention any of it. They said they'd tested a whole bunch of SSDs that didn't perform as they thought they should. Do, do you know how, I mean, we spend huge amounts of money making sure SSDs perform as they should because we chuck away the ones that don't. We don't use manufacturers where we know they won't work. You guys are in exactly the same situation. Yeah. And I That's was, what uh, we've done really badly, is fail to educate you about all and, this And going. it's a really good, yeah, the, to give you a, for instance, too, yeah, take the, the SSDs, for instance, in, in, in my example of, we do a tremendous amount of, yeah, how do you take not just the same batch of SSDs or a bin of it, how do you take them from different manufacturers and account for all the underlying discrepancies in the specs of all the different drives? And then potentially maybe if you don't want to depend on that for, I don't know, call it garbage collection, right? How do you disable all of that and then write your own so that you can basically remove hardware dependency? I agree, I completely agree. And you had mentioned something actually last panel that I want to bring up again of, you made the point that I, I thought was really great of, again, at the end of the day, storage is, is really the only one out of like a, a lot of the projects here of, at, at the end of the day, how do you store something now, right? And be able to retrieve it at a later date. Right? How, how do you retrieve it next week, next year, and be able to, you know, the vast majority of the time, get it back in a reliable fashion? The re reliability is, is so key to all of this, without a doubt. I'm, I'm trying to work out what this has to do with OpenStack. I mean, I think nobody's going to disagree with the comments that you're making here, but no, the, these... Th th but I, well, let me explain very quickly what it's going to do with OpenStack. I believe that we're in a situation where we're very comfortable with networking, we're very comfortable with compute, and we've been through a cycle of understanding oh, I that. don't know, you, you're not going to the neutron sessions if you yeah. think that's the case, then. <laughs> Let's pick on neutron. There's <laughs> 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 one thing all the storage people can agree on, that we, we don't like the it's networking people, people, Let's right? Let's pick on neutron. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit, that's I mean, you're, uh, just, I, you're either deflated my balloon or reinflated. <laughs> like <that. I> <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the, I, I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying here, but I mean, these are generic storage problems. I mean, I'm wondering whether the, the thing you're picking up on is, like, who's, who's doing this now? Certainly from the, the, the Ceph perspective, we, we definitely deal with storage teams, but often we're dealing with cloud builder teams. These are not storage teams. These are people who have different expertise. They are Linux people. They're DevOps people. They are running fast. They're not there taking 18, 24 months to build a solution. They're doing this in three to six months. And I'm wondering here whether it's just a persona issue. That, well, this yeah, of was, course, you know. Th this was coming back to my point that I got chopped off on. Right? So, yeah, well, 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 maybe, so Greg, was, maybe there, Greg can finish it for there, you. Yeah, exactly. So do you want to handle that? Um, what, what it comes down to, especially uh, what I was going to say, is that we, around uh, not only on education, but around pushing things forward, is that we as vendors need to come together. Otherwise, something will emerge inside OpenStack. It'll be top down. It'll be all written in Python. It'll be some all of these things that are going on. We'll find it absolutely immutable. And we're going to lose that experience because if we don't do the legwork, it's not going to happen. And as Neil, uh, Neil said, it's cloud builders. They don't care, right? They're going, to use, they're going to use what's considered to be best of breed. And if we don't define what's best of breed as, as vendors, we're going to lose that. Well, I don't know. I, I, you can't force what, what is best to read on people. That's, that's got to emerge, right? And uh, I think well, that we're, we're already forcing neutron on people. That uh, is well. the best to breed. So <laughs> I just, yeah. And I know it's it turned into a neutron session, but the way I see it, there are projects. We know it. We mentioned neutron. We mentioned solometer. It's like, these were invented here. You must use them. It's like, no. Are you trying to give a fantastic lead to the big tent <laughs> question here? This yeah. is a fantastic I was laying here. all yes, this You should up. be on radio, you two. I should probably just sit down yeah. over to the side here and just yeah. let you go. You're supposed to be the moderator. <laughs> Oh, this a, is good. This is the talent. So, uh, <laughs> <sighs> Neil. <laughs> do you want to ask a question? We're not giving you any airtime here at all. No, I mean, this, this seems to be leading up to, we, you know, we actually do prepare for this panel. It sounds odd. I mean, it does consist of three emails, but it still counts as preparation here. Um, about, I read know, one of them. <laughs> it was in the Go, middle. Neil, just pick it up on it. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's a, there's, there was a, we were discussing whether, how, how the big tent philosophy and governance model that's moving into OpenStack is going to affect storage here, which I think is kind of where you're going that's, with this. That's which is, pretty much where I was going with it. Um, you know, from, from a storage point of view, it's probably, well, I think storage and computer network, networking, those are the big fundamental things, right? Those are probably things which you want to mess with the least because people have got the most invested in them. They've right. got the, the, they've, they have the most impact if you change anything here. And I think this, the big tent probably is a great idea for ancillary projects, which are not dependencies, which are not critical. I think, I think it absolutely makes sense. Let survival of the fittest. But yeah, we, we have an issue here where there's, there's a, there is a tendency in open source to say, 
it's not invented here. I don't want to maintain old code. I'm going to do something new. And you know, the question is, is that going to happen to the storage layers? And that's a risk. Yeah. And, and to add to that uh, a little bit, too, of the biggest issue, I guess you could say, that I see with, with the Big Tent philosophy is I completely agree with the philosophy behind it of its competition, survival of the fittest. I, I get that. But is that in the best interest of the user base and growing the users right now? It, it right. seems to me that is it is Big Ten is focused, especially in a storage context, is, is focused more on the vendors. It's mo f more focused what, on the developers. Isn't it mostly navel-gazing, though? I mean, how many... Yeah, from a users? customer point of view, it totally is. Yeah, right. and, yeah outside looking in, I, I believe it is. And, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, if you have, if tomorrow, right, a, you know, the, another Cinder project came up that's not Cinder and started to compete with Cinder, which is entirely possible now with Big Ten. You know, do you have a fragmentation of the ecosystem? Does that confuse the users? Do I, you know, does now your storage platform have a Cinder driver mm -hmm. or a, a Cinder.next driver? It, it's, it, it further makes um, an outside looking in and, and adoption of new users into the OpenStack e ecosystem. It makes it very confusing. You have this, this dichotomy of, of big tent on one side and then defining a core on the, on the, on the other end one of them is very vendor focused and developer focused, and one of them I, I feel should be very user focused and use case and application focused. And that is where I'm really struggling with with Big Tent. Of at the end of, end of the day, will it will it be best case or best use case, short term versus long term? Right, mind you. Yeah, I mean, there is a good side and a bad side to it. That, that, that's your point, Alex. Right, so. Um, in the near term, my opinion is that, yes, it's going to ca cause some confusion. You know, you've got uh, basic components, Nova, Cinder, Swift, um, Neutron, um, Manila now. Um, but anything beyond that, right, it's anybody's game today. Like, as you go higher up the stack, there's a clear overlap between what Cloud Foundry is doing and what OpenStack wants to do and what... Uh, Kubernetes is doing what Apache Mesos is doing. I think uh, uh, survival of the fittest. Right? containers con conversation all of a sudden. Uh, uh, the, the room will explode well, well, the, for people that's the just whole, for uh, containers. <laughs> well, that, that's the whole point of the big tent, right? We want to be a one big happy family. Um, let the best solution win that fits the overall objective of the providing your next-gen cloud solutions, right? Hang on, um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. I don't have an opinion on Big Tent, but how can you be one big happy family where somebody wins? Oh, that, that's the point. So, so that's really the point, right? Who's going to win, right? If you really look at how OpenStack really came to power, it's the developers at the end of the day. Right. They put in their sweat and made the initial components work, right? The making it work is the key thing, right? Right now, as you go higher up the stack, it doesn't work very well across all the pieces that you want to integrate. So what's going to work? You know, I think it's only going to, time is going to tell that. And will it be one vendor driving it? Will it be like Kubernetes driving something or EMC driving something through the, the snaky product? Whatever, right? Um, so, <laughs> oh, geez. Um, See, but, but the point is. Yeah, you, had to, you had to light the fuse. But the point is, it's very important to encourage whoever has the passion to bring the technology in to the community, right? If, if your customers are passionately asking for that type of solution, you're going to support that kind of solution, right? And it's going to thrive. If more than one customer bites it, it's going to thrive. Big so you need to let the, it happen. The, the problem here is, as happens in open source, nobody has passion for doing re-architecture and maintaining technical debt. And this, this is that's, oh, this no, is the challenge, sure right? Enough. That I think that big, big know, tent is inevitable. It's inevitable in networking. It's inevitable in compute. It's inevitable in storage. So I understand all of the reasons people are saying we shouldn't. It's going to happen. Yeah, I agree. It's going to happen. So uh, yeah, real quick, I'm just remind if anybody's got a question, please come up to the microphone. Jay, you've had plenty of time to walk to the microphone. No last minute grenades. Oh, we got someone. Oh. We really would like some. Oh no, he's using the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, give, give us your name, company, and I'm question. A, sorry, I'm not on here. Yeah, you're on. Test. Okay, I'm Hubbard Smith. I'm with Samsung. My question to the panel is, you're, you, 
you're getting there, but you're flirting around the main issue. The main issue with all of you guys is quality. You guys have engineered, spent decades engineering EMC, NetApp. I used to work for NetApp. Red Hat, you built your business around quality. Why don't you address the quality question here? The quality of what? How do we, as a community, engineer quality into our platform? Engineer you mean OpenStack? OpenStack, yes. Beyond, beyond one, pro sorry, beyond one project or in individual projects? Yes, yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah. Right, so there's, the, 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 I think the thing here about the delivering and developing quality, it requires, a, I actually believe the big tent approach is necessary, but not necessarily going to give us any better quality. That's the first thing. Although, com although competition always does at the end, it's a very long game that you play when, you, when you're in a competitive environment and expecting quality to come out the back end of it. The, the issue for me is the, the, the governance of the projects needs to be much more rigorous. And I really am a big believer in, yes, this is a democracy. Yes, this is a big tent. No, you don't get a vote. I was quite serious about it. I do believe that we need to have a bit more structure in terms of the way that the projects are organized, managed, and the mechanisms by which they conduct their business. Having a very open and free mechanism for conducting your business, uh, you know, using tools like IRC is, is, is one thing, but then having some kind of collective consensus on which you can all agree to disagree or disagree to agree, but at the end of the day, you're all going to move in the same direction is another thing. And I don't think we're seeing enough of that. No, and I think last year you even talked about how that kind of boiled us down to the lowest common denominator. Yeah, that's right. We were in danger of delivering real quality for something that we already had, which was LCD. You know, it literally was the lowest common denominator. You wanted disk space, and it came in blocks, and that was all you got. That's all it did, you know? I, th I think where you're going is something that's come up before, which is that the PTLs, and not BDLs, if I can pile in the acronyms there, the project technical leads, uh, they get, you know, look at Cinder. Mike started saying no this session, right? There's not many PTLs who are brave enough to start saying to big vendors, no, you're, you're, you're bringing in bad quality, you're breaking things, um, it's not going to ship. And that, that's difficult because the PTLs right now, they're volunteers, they're often working for vendors themselves, they're in an awkward position. Um, I mean, this, this is, you know, if you look at Linux, Linus in, in fruity language says no a lot. And that's what made, has made Linux such a high quality, you know, in the upstream before even any downstream gets to it. Right. I think this is the challenge on OpenStack that you, you, know, you need to say no more often. But that's very difficult when you're trying to build a big tent and get community and get adoption. It's, there's a balance, and maybe the balance isn't in the wrong, I, wrong I, way. I think when you reach a specific level, I won't call it critical mass, because there are things you can't buy. Time is one of them, right? So um, once you reach a specific critical mass, you can get to the point where you start saying no to people, because it's no, it's a real thing. Right. You say yes all the time when the project's beginning because you need to build it out. But now we're reaching that point in OpenStack where we can tell people, this is a bad move to make. I'm not going to do it. And life carries on tomorrow after you say no. And I think that's where we are on that. So around quality, uh, we'll get the quality in there. We can't buy time. Um, it ne everything needs more time. We're at the point now where the most important word is going to be no. We're not doing yeah. that. Well, and I think one of the big big points to that is you look at what has happened in the last uh, you know, cinder cycle. Right? What has happened in the last cinder cycle is, first of all, you had a lot more drivers, again. I mean, it is up to, I don't know, 40, 40, 50, what's it up to? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot of drivers, right? But at the same time, the, the, the passing CI testing and pushing that actually back on the vendors helps a lot with the quality, right? It's going to help a lot with it long term. That is still relatively new, right? And everyone's still trying to get through that gate. Yep. Um, but, but that is something that helps with the quality. But to your point earlier, it, it, is, it is hard to motivate developers that they may be paid for it, but at the end of the day, they, they typically want to go after sexy, not boring. And getting the quality at times is boring. Having a PTL willing to say say no is maybe maybe boring at times. And sometimes the quality is just the boring work, and unfortunately. The moment this um, and, yeah, and, and, and right. this this gets this gets into enterprise, which as we know is boring, right? But the thing is, once you start having enterprise customers, they have to live with this all the time. So this this I'm going to go off and I'm going to conquer new worlds. That goes out the window because someone's saying to you. Um, I got upgrades coming. I need things going on over here. What, what are you doing for me? You're not doing anything for me? 
then it yeah. becomes an issue. So I think the the rocket um, putting the rocket boost uh, the rocket booster on top of the car and shooting it down the runway that's been all nice and fun. But now it's a case of we need to put this thing in the road and you need to put the kids in the back and run to the shops. And that's where we're getting in the life cycle. Uh, one, one comment I want to make is that, the, you know, I was just uh, uh, speaking with one of our engineers yesterday. He mentioned about the new QA initiative that has actually started, um, which is going to do the integration test. And they're seeking for volunteers to help test the interoperability between multiple components. So I see, uh, you know, there is more and more investment being made to enhance the quality. You know, I think um, it's a good time. I think it's just a QA initiative that started. Um, you know, um, there are lots of meetings happening this week in the design summits around who's going to be contributing, how are we going to improve the overall quality of OpenStack as opposed to individual components. We got another question here. Uh, Scott Brightwell with EMC. Um, I wanted to ask, you mentioned Neutron, uh, you're starting to allude to um, what I think they did is the decomposition of drivers and plugins out of upstream, out of the main Neutron and give that most wholly to the vendors, right? That's how they manage and are beginning to man manage now this uh, big swath of, of drivers that they have to deal with. And I'm wondering your thoughts about not necessarily big tent and competing with Cinder, but putting smaller shims into sender and allowing more people to compete sort of within the driver space and have feature rich drivers that are extensible and can do more application logic that's driven by the vendors. I, I'm going to have Great Scott question. tag me out here. So I'm just going yeah. to go up and high five. Neil? So the, 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 my question would be back to you. What do the consumers of this want? Because there's the, you know, having, having some neat and cool features and the ability to shim things, if there's no demand for the stuff that we're shimming, or the stuff that we're enabling by shimming, then where's the advantage? So I, you know, I, I need well, to understand. Well, it's, it's hard to, to talk about is. demand for things that aren't available. So once we make feature more feature function available and possible underneath Cinder, then perhaps we can start talking about demand. But it's unfair to say where's the demand for something that can't be done today. Yeah, but effectively we're abstracting out a layer so that there's already a demand there in place out in you know consumer land for certain features that storage has. So if if we you know if we're not meeting that demand, then that's one thing. But I'm I'm wondering what kind of demand you're talking about or non-demand. I mean, I need an example. Uh, replication. Oh boy, so I, know that one. I need to create a. I need to create a sender. <laughs> Can we talk about this in Paris? <laughs> I don't know. This sounds Actually, really replication is a spot. really good pick because the, if there's one thing I've learned this week is that we still can't agree what anybody means by replication. So give me the control to be able to do replication. That, that's pretty much like if there's if there's a nail to be hammered with shims, it's replication. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this, the, the stuff that needs to have the quality improved is what we have now, right? I, I think we can. The, the, the essential stuff which has gone in there. I mean, you know, we've backup migration replication for whatever definition it is. That's what that is what the demand is right now, and it doesn't work very well. Now, if that requires rearchitecture, if it requires, if it's just a QA issue, whatever it is, that, that's what needs to be addressed right now. It, 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 you know, I don't think we want to be rearchitecting just for the sake of it. It has to be driven. If it's, I think it's, it is quality. It's just getting the things to work now. That's what needs to be done. That's great. Replication was a really cruel one. You couldn't have picked a worse one. <laughs> But, but it is a great example. I mean, it, it, let's, oh, absolutely. Let's, let's pick yeah. up on that a, a bit, Alex. You know, we talked about you know, what, we've, what changes have we seen in the last six months. Let's, let's talk about replication. So, re I, okay, I'm, I'm not speaking from experience here. I'm only speaking from a sort of that osmotic feel you get by talking to people who know things more, more things than I do. That's quite a lot of people, by the way, uh, apart from one person in this room. Anyway, Greg. So. <laughs> How did Mom. I become the heavy all of a sudden? I'm um, liking this. Yeah. The, 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 were we chasing what? you out of the last summit? <laughs> All right. The wheel turns, my friend. Yes, apparently. So the thing about replication is we, we, we've got some fundamental disagreements about what we mean by replication, what it is to do replication, and how replication is done. There are several ways of doing it in the industry, and the word has unfortunately become a catch-all for a set of procedures and processes that we need to further break down. We need to actually kill the word replication and talk about other kinds of stuff. It, we need other words for it. Because there are about, I know of at least five different things that people would class as replication that are all different and they fundamentally work differently and they're not abstractable in the same way. So, 
know, that's a that's a that's a big issue. The, the, the replication is a good example of, um, of where where the market's going right now. The reason this stuff is becoming important is because people are running this, and of course, the first thing they say is, "Crap, I need backups. I need DR. I need you know, right. this is this has got to go into multiple places here." I mean, it's like, it's a kind of obvious thing when you think one step ahead of uh, of the development. Yep. Um, but you know, the, the challenge here again this is the tension between things which have been architected for cloud, where it's, this is not enterprise backup, it's your application that handles this. That's the cloud way, that's the Amazon way. This is what it started off as. But now you've got these enterprise demands coming and going, no, I'm an admin, I, I can't rely on my users to do that. I've got I to gotta back the stuff up for them, I can't trust them. So I think it's a tension between perhaps the original design goals of you know, pure play sort of cloud Amazon style architecture and now what enterprises are demanding, which is now what we're used to. And I think that's where the tension is, is is producing bad, you know, bad quality outcomes. And I, I think previously replication. You talk about replication, people say to you, especially around these halls, well, if I've R sync in one side and R sync in the other side, you go, no, no. <laughs> um, but we, yeah, the, we already have a, the, there's a backup uh, project from what I understand running along. Replication is the next uh, big frontier, and it's um, it's it's a huge mountain to climb. So but there's going to be a lot of work. We talked about this in Paris, isn't this? We don't have to rely on OpenStack to provide every single feature. That's where the vendors should be contributing in, in their own value add, right? There's a manageability aspect to that. It's not yeah. just the underlying technology. So there is, it's not the tough nut of creating a replication service from scratch. It is a case right. of how do I kick all this off for all the individuals who might be using the OpenStack yeah. thing. But, so. but it's also, it's like, who's it for? Is it, is it the user level? Is it the admin level? There's different, again, different profiles of people and how they're using it, it varies. And this, this is why it's, it's, a, it's a hard one. But again, it has to be addressed. I'd rather we just sat and focused on this for the next 12 months and didn't do any other sort of sexy features. You know, if there's, if these, are the, these are the kind of things which you've, we've got to just nail in the head and we can't be discussing them 12 months from now. If so we're doing that for 12 months, I'm retiring, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of think like, you know, uh, I agree with Greg, and Greg is the smart guy for this topic now. Um, <laughs> All of a sudden, but genius. Basically, I think, you know, there are a lot of uh, lower-level problems that OpenStack still needs to solve. I would rather leave replication type of a solution for vendors to solve right now on top of the, you know, uh, uh, lower level core com you know, components of OpenStack. There's so many things. When you look at a replication, you know Mark very well as well, every vendor solution is different. Um, and it's different because the customer's deployments are different. Um, how you do a replication underlying the technology, you know, some people have patents, some people have some unique technologies that they, they you know, Hitachi, for instance, looks at uh, how do we speed up the data transfer as part of the replication, not just do the basic replication, because we have that technology. Similarly, I'm sure EMC has something, Solid Fire has something. I think it's a very complicated problem to solve. I would rather have OpenStack focus on getting the bare bone core components. No, but, it, it, no, the, but there's a difference here. We, the, yeah, the vendors are going to address this, but it's, 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 um, you know, it's what Mark said. It's the, it's the orchestration. It's all the control plane stuff, you know, and it's, you, you can't separate one from the other. This is the inherent problem, right? You, you, we bring all these great underlying things, but we have to express them together in a unified way, which works for the end user. And that's proving hard. You know, that's 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 difficult. So, guys, I, we have. I hate to cut you off. We got two minutes left. I want to get another question. <laughs> another question. No, no, no. Please. I want to get through last thoughts. We'll go right down the row, Alex. The weather's been lovely. Vancouver <laughs> is a fabulous city. <laughs> Quick show of hands. How many of you are going to Tokyo? Mm. Okay, might not see you there. Oh. Um, Somebody want to announce Yes, Alex? I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> rem rem <laughs> remember, every time you put a workload in a public cloud, storage vendor fires someone. So. <laughs> 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 All right, we got your I final. love you, man. <laughs> we, we got your final thoughts. I know, I you? can't follow, uh, follow with that one. You know, I live in Seattle. The weather is nice here. So is in Seattle. Come over to Seattle when you get a chance. Nope. Uh, I we've been bitching and complaining a lot, but I I also want to say thank you because it's just it's a, it's also a great community to be part of. It's there is a lot of excitement. We may get frustrated with it, but it's 
I want to thank all the developers who contributed to the cycle, and are going to contribute to the next one here. I don't want, I don't want to feel there's a lack of love for the... Well, it's an amazing project, right? And it's easy to pick, and that's what we're paid to do, but it's well done, everyone who contributed. Well, yeah, you, 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 you took mine a bit, and yeah, I just wanted to say also thank you. I mean, it is a completely thankless job, without a doubt. Um, it, it is amazing to me at the end of the day, though, to, to watch everything evolve and also really be able to openly talk about the points, replication, quality, all of these things, and raise them up to the community and watch them get solved over time is, is truly amazing. That's, yep. I really like that portion of this. Mark, take us home. The, uh, the bottom line, and it, it's all here, we do gripe and we do complain. I heard yesterday people were saying that networking oh, is difficult. Storage is quite easy because there are only three types of abstractions. Nonsense, right? And everyone up in this stage, everyone up in this stage, anyone involved in the, Silver pro uh, uh, the Cinder Project, and Manila, and everything else is going on, wants to make this stuff better, right? We wake up in the morning, and when we get up here and we complain about this, that, and the other, the fact of the matter is that when we leave this room, it's right, how, how do we fix those? That's what we do, that's why we're here, and we thank you for your time. That's great, thank you very much, and thank you for attending this session, really appreciate it.